I mean, even leading up to, to Chris's ejection, is that where everything just yeah. kind of started to... Yeah. Yeah, we were we were pretty good the first eight minutes of the game. Ball was moving, and uh, we were getting good looks, and um, energy was good. And um, the fouling in the at, you know late in the first quarter really hurt us. Mid to late, I think they shot 13 free throws in the first quarter, um, which put us on pace to give up 52, which is exactly what we gave up. So we just foul, 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 and. Um, you can't can't win in the NBA if you're constantly trying to attack a set defense after free throws, and you're giving up you know basically 44 points to, uh, tonight off the free throw line. So it was the fouling, and then I think the offense stopped too. The ball really stuck after the first eight minutes, and uh, so that second quarter was really frustrating for everybody. And um, I like the way the uh, the bench came in and fought in the second half and gave us a chance, but um, we have to be much more consistent. And then with Chris's ejection, I mean, from your vantage point, from your understanding, what Chris said, what Scott said, I mean, I know you also got a technical on that play. Yeah. What was the issue? What was going on there? Uh, I, I think Scott just felt like um, Chris didn't stop, and he kept going, and that's why he gave him the second one. So um, that was his explanation. What was your frustration when you were, you know, drawing at him? Well, I didn't, I, I didn't think Chris deserved to be ejected. I mean, I, I don't, you know, the, the, the first tech, absolutely. But I thought um, the second one was unnecessary, you know. I mean, everybody gets frustrated out there. And, um, you know, but that's, uh, that's up to the official. What was your, uh, your thoughts on, on how the bench was able to get you guys back in the same was any consideration of what Steph or, or there was consideration but you know it's one of those games where um the bench goes out and plays great um much better than the starters played and um they get you back in it and you reward them and you stay with it but we we definitely thought about it um but um, those are those are weird moments, you know, as as a coach, where you just it doesn't feel right to go away from the group that is playing great. And um, you know, I think that was a decision to stay with them because they were making the run, and um, it's kind of usually how we we do it. Most teams do it. Who was sort of the practical impact and the emotional impact of losing Chris at that stage? Yeah, it was a big deal. You know, we, we need him, obviously. Um, we're without Draymond, um, you know, without Gary. We're, we're already shorthanded, and, and Chris knows that. Um, so it was uh, it was unfortunate, but, um, you know, again, it's to me it's about uh, our guys competing together, consistently competing together. And uh, I, they, they have a really good connection. Um, it's a great group. They really like each other. Um, but... When you see a team compete together, you know it. You feel it. It's the communication. It's it's playing with force. It's playing downhill. It's playing with great communication. You can hear everybody, you know, um, talking defensively. Although in this building you can't hear anything because it's like a club. It's like a it's like a South Beach club out there. What are we doing? I'm being dead serious. Like I couldn't hear anything out there. It's just the whole whole game. It's just this thumping techno club music can we just have a basketball game anymore what the hell sorry for the rant uh, coach what is the specific impact of not having Draymond in a game like this well he he represents some of what was missing tonight you know I thought uh, Okogi came out and set a great tone I thought I thought Devin Booker came out and set a, t a great tone defensively just in us um we just um Without Draymond, sometimes we we just don't have that uh, that juice, and that's where we really need him. Um, so we need to get him back. Obviously, he's got to miss another game, but um, you know we need. I, I I can see the the blueprint for this team. I think we can be a really good team, and I and I see it. I know what it is, um, but it starts with us competing together and feeling that that energy that comes when a group really is connected and competing and not caring about anything other than winning. Steve, as you know, and as quickly came up on social media tonight, Chris has history with Scott. Um, and Scott's got some history with you guys in the playoffs and Sean Livingston and all that. Did you, are you worried at all that was part of that? Did that does that enter your mind when something like this happens? Uh, not really. I mean, I'm thinking about everything else um, during the game. So uh, I'm aware of that, but um, it wasn't something that I, 
gave much much thought to. You, you said that you see the potential for this team mm -hmm. or what they can be, but and historically, I mean, your starting five has just been yeah. one of the best five man right. units in this game. Why do you think that the starting five have have been struggling a little bit more this year? Is it just the connection and f feeling out the chemistry, or is there something a little bit more to it? Uh, I wish I knew. Um, you know, it didn't help that, that Draymond missed camp, you know, with the injury. Um, but um, we've just, that group just hasn't clicked yet. And um, and that's part of the blueprint. That that group has to click. You know, it's been the best five-man unit in the league the last two years. Um, Analytically and and on on tape, I mean, it shows. There's a connection. There's a there's a lot of ball movement. Um, everybody understands their roles. Um, so that group has to click. And once once that group does, then I love uh, the the uh, guys we have on the bench. I love the potential to put together some some combinations that really click. So yeah, I think we can be really good. But that that first group needs to set a tone and and you know find find their rhythm. You talked at length about Clay the other night after his first 20-point game. He obviously comes back with another good shooting game. Yeah. What, how, how significant is that to you to see it twice in a row? And it looked like he only forced maybe one. It looked like his shots were mostly, as you yeah. talked about the other night, more in rhythm tonight. Yeah, I'm not worried about Clay's sh shot at all. I mean, he's one of the great shooters of all time, and he historically starts seasons out slowly and then picks it up. Um, and you can see he's finding his, his rhythm, so... He's going to be fine, but um, you know he's he's part of that group that um, we got to see a you know greater connection. We we got to see a, a, a you know a, an energy and a, a group communication and a group um, sort of uh, force. And um, right now it's just it just feels like we're disconnected, and we got to we got to find that connection. When you say, that, I'm sorry, go ahead. No, go ahead, Rich. When you talk about the lack of connection, is that not just offensive, but I mean? In the second quarter, they looked like three or four times the sun got right down the lane. That's my point. And you got mad. It looked like yeah. one. Yeah. Yeah. And and you know we we um, we we made some mistakes on the game plan as well. Um, you know, got to know personnel. We got to know who we're closing out to. Um, but that's the connection I'm talking about. You know, if um, if a team is really connected, somebody misses an assignment, somebody else goes over and yells at them, and that you know and. Every, there's an energy. There's a let's let's get this done, and I don't see that right now. You mentioned like needing your your starters, your players to not worry about anything else, but just going out there and playing. When you watch a guy like Pods go out there and, and play like he did tonight, plus twenty, and he had that really great game a couple weeks ago or something. Do you is that something a trait that you see that all he's focusing on out there? These young guys, all they're focusing on is. And that's it, and else. Yeah, I mean, I, I think that's Brandon's nature. He just he just goes out and, and plays, um, and the ball tends to move, and he finds rebounds. He's just one of those guys who has a good knack and, and feel. So um, I thought Corey Joseph was great tonight. I mean, just the way he came out and set a tone and, you know, brought the juice and the energy. And so we need that. We need that from, from everybody. It can't just be, you know, a handful of guys. For Dario, it's still a welcome back game for him too so besides Chris so do you feel like with him coming in and establishing that inside presence and that basically galvanize your bench as well? Dario's great fantastic player we're lucky to have him he got in the foul trouble early that hurt us but um, he was great that's why we kept him out there the whole second half and um, he can he can really play so um, he's going to play a, a big role for us this year.